on something simple, a story, because uh, because that's what our brand does, really. And sitting down with each of you guys, it's hard to get through five minutes without some moving, incredible story, which also happens to be fun and funny and touching, etc. So um, I'm going to share one that. Uh, yeah, that I guess centers on many of the ideas that, that uh, align all of us. Um, one is that art is incredibly powerful and connects people like nothing else. And the other is that you never know who you're going to meet and who's going to approach you. And this brand that we've stumbled into has connected us to all of you, which is like in incredible, the relationships, but it's also connected us and continues to connect us to people that are incredible. And today was the first time I asked anybody, it was my Uber driver, a tell me something good. And I asked her, I had an appointment after I saw you guys, and I'm driving alone, and she just seemed interesting and, and um, had a Brazilian accent, and I just thought it might be fun to just ask her. And I didn't even, I didn't even read the brief from the marketing about how we do it. I just said, hey, we're lifestyle. <laughs> I, I, I probably did it wrong, but I said, you know, you're probably not supposed to film through the mirror as the person's driving. <laughs> but I did. And I said, just, is there something you can tell me about your life that's good? Because, um, you know, we're going to try to get a million stories and, and raise a million dollars for kids. Sure, I'll do that. She tells me that she just went through a divorce and it was really difficult and she was feeling sorry for herself. We'll watch this tomorrow, I think, if it shows up the way I did on my phone. And then she says, um, but then my friend told me that she needed a kidney transplant. And she lives here in Boston near me and she has six months to find one. So we researched and found out you gotta get in line. And so we said, well, let's start our own Facebook page. So we start a Facebook page and a short while later, this woman calls and says, I'll give you my kidney. And they said, well, first of all, like you have to be a match, so we have to go figure that out. And so the woman says, well, I'll go with you and figure it out. Okay, this strange woman's gonna go. And they go and she's a perfect match. Wow. So they said, why, why do you wanna give your kidney? Like, do you have some organ you know, donor in the family or some failure of something of your own cells? She goes, no, I just read it and thought you needed my kit. <laughs> so the woman, I said, well, what happened? She goes, she gave my friend the kidney, and uh, she's perfectly healthy now. And how's the other woman doing? She's great. She's only got one kidney now, but she's great. <laughs> okay, thank you for the ride. <laughs> I mean, this was me. I'm looking through the mail, and there's a letter from a maximum security prison like, uh, you know, some like, state state penitentiary, right? And, can I, and, she's, and she's like, do you know this person? No. She said, can I open this? And I was on the road, whatever. Yes. And the woman's been incarcerated 23, 26 years, something. She drove the getaway car for a double murder at 16 years old. Oh my God. She was a child and got involved in this awful thing. And in prison, she fell in love with our brand somehow. And she made a decision to focus on the good in her life and just every day ask for forgiveness for what she did. Yes. And she thinks she's going to get out on parole in two years, and she needs a job. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she needs lots of things, but it was incredible when these things happen every day. So I'm going to go back for a quick story that involves our family and goes uh, prior to Life is Good, way back, right? One of our older brothers, who some of you guys have met, and maybe some of them, there's six of us. So our older brother, Big Al, uh, brought me and my friend, Scotty McCoy, to uh, a concert when we were real young, and it was my first band that I ever saw. And lucky for me, it was the Almond Brothers. Oh, yes. and it was an yes. outdoor venue, what used to be called the Great Woods. Mm -hmm. And I never experienced anything like it. Big Al kind of showed us how to do a tailgate. We, we, he bought enough food to cook for everybody in the cars next to us, and we were serving uh, chicken with toothpicks in it and frisbees and going around, and we became everybody's friend, and it was unbelievable. And when the Almond Brothers came on, that music took off. Blue skies, I mean, I'll never forget it. Um, I became like a live music fan for the rest of my life, and the Almond Brothers to this day is my favorite band. And uh, so fast forward many, many, many years later, decades later, and the Almond Brothers announced in 2016 that they're going to have uh, 
their, their final, final gig yes. at the Beacon Theater in New York City. And when I read that, I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to bring Big Al and Johnny and some of my closest friends who really love the Almond Brothers, and John Vance happens to be our attorney, a huge Almond Brothers fan, and we're going to go down and get good seats, and we're going to see this final show. So we did it, and it was incredible, three sets, and they played everything. And we thought we're in New York City, we'll go out all night, and everything, but we did. We're, we're such close friends, we went back to the hotel, we ripped a few beers, and we just told the same old stories we told a million times, and, and put each other to bed, and we just crashed, right? And it, was a, it was actually a great night. And in the morning, I had business with Life is Good in Florida, and everybody was passed out all over the place. And I kind of tiptoed out of there, and Tyler Waxstein was with me, a young guy that was working with us, and he was traveling with me at the time. And so we're going through JFK, one of the biggest airports in the world, right? And we're walking through at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I said to Tyler, I'm so hungover, I want to go in the smoothie shop and get a, a smoothie. And I went in there, and there's one person in the smoothie shop. And it was Greg Unruh. <laughs> and I, I thought, what? This is crazy. <laughs> like, somebody's messing with me. So I walked up to him and I just immediately said, Greg Unruh. And he said, that's right. And I shook his hand and I said, I, I was at the show last night and thank you. It was incredible. And then I just blabbered on. I just said, when I was a kid and I told him everything. <laughs> and, and, and he looked at me and he said, well, I guess you and me got something in common then. And I had no idea what he was talking about. What are you talking about? My brother kind of brought me along too. Well, I know the Almond Brothers history and I've read everything about the Almond Brothers. His only brother, Dwayne Almond, died when they were very young. They actually, they, although they're called the Almond Brothers, there's only one Almond in a band. Dwayne Almond was considered one of the greatest guitarists to ever live, but he was snuffed out early in a motorcycle accident. After they made one album, and, you know, so Eat a Peach, the album, was because he was cut off by a peach truck and killed. And um, so I realized when he said, we got something in common, the hair stuck up on my arms. I said, oh, my God. When I flew to New York, I read in the paper that the day after the show, which is when I'm in the smoothie shop, and it was whipping through my little head, is the 40th anniversary of the death of Dwayne Allman. And so he was walking around that airport thinking about his brother, and I walked in and blabbed about my brother and how it connected us and how it connected me to music. And I can't even get the story out because it was so mind-blowing that this could happen. And so um, I, I said, can I take a picture? And I never take a picture with a famous person. I could give a shit, right? But I had to have a, a picture. And so Tyler was still trying to figure out, is that, is that who I think it is? And why are you guys talking about brothers? And he didn't know what was, I had to explain to him on the way, right? So I put my arm around him and we took a picture with Dwayne Allman. Tyler would walk away and I couldn't get the words out. He goes, oh my God. He goes, that was Greg Allman. I go, yeah. He goes, what did you guys talk about? He goes, I heard you talking about your brother. What were you guys talking about? And I go, I, I, I can't even say. And I took out the picture and I texted it to my brother. And at that point, they were headed and getting on the train with my Needham friends that I grew up with. And they were all got on the train and I didn't explain anything. They just got a picture of me. <laughs> and they, they, they figured I pulled some strings or life is good, did something or whatever. But it did, I, I, it didn't, it, it just happened. And so I wanna, I want to, recite something which is one of the many lyrics that I love that Greg Allman wrote, but he wrote it in the wake of his brother's death. And I'm not telling this story to bring people down. I'm telling the story because as you've all told me already today and you learn every day, our brand is about all of life. It's about sometimes the fight of life. And it's about choosing to focus on what's right. It's about recognizing that we don't have infinite time together, and we don't have infinite time on this planet, but we need to be good to each other and enjoy the ride. So nobody says it like an artist, and Greg Allman says, last Sunday morning, the sunshine felt like rain. The weeks before, they all seemed the same. With the help of God and true friends, I come to realize 
I still have two strong legs and maybe wings to fly. Hey, I ain't wasting time no more. Because time goes by like a hurricane. Hell yeah. 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 Yeah.